During World War II, the robust logistics support system of the U.S. military was a crucial element in achieving victory. So, what equipment did the U.S. soldiers equipped with under this strong logistics support? Without further ado, let's get straight to the point. Let's start with the attire. Starting from the bottom, the first item is the M1943 Field Boots. Just by looking at the pictures, you can tell that these boots are made entirely of tough cowhide leather. The soles are made of rubber, which is commonly seen today, and they have slip-resistant patterns and studs. There are two fastening straps on the boot shaft, serving the purpose of securing the legs and stabilizing the foot. In terms of overall design, these boots would still be considered fashionable today. Of course, appearance alone doesn't matter on the battlefield. The reason why the M1943 field boots quickly became popular among airborne troops and spread throughout the entire military is primarily due to the convenient buckle fastening straps. They are easy to put on and take off, and they also have built-in waterproof functionality. The material is durable, and if not violently damaged, one pair of boots could be passed down for three generations without any problem. Moving up from the ankles, let's talk about the trousers. The M1943 field trousers are likely familiar to those who appreciate standard issue uniforms. They may not be the most comfortable to wear, but their main feature is their strong abrasion resistance. There are two pockets on each side of the thighs, along with some fastening straps. These straps can be used to attach ammunition, grenades, or other lightweight equipment. Above the trousers is the belt, known as the S-Belt. It is primarily made of thick canvas, which provides excellent toughness. In actual combat, this belt's role goes beyond simply holding up the trousers. Most of the time, it carries ammunition pouches, grenades, canteens, and other items. It not only needs to bear a significant load, but also withstand pulling and tugging. Moving further up, the matching piece for the trousers is the M1943, also known as M43, field jacket. It is the predecessor of the M65 military uniform. This jacket is made of canvas, and it is much more comfortable to wear compared to the material of the trousers. It is also highly resistant to wear and tear. Continuing upwards, we have the helmet. The helmet is the most crucial element in the entire individual equipment. Its specific functions don't need to be elaborated here. During that time, the U.S. military was equipped with the M1 steel helmet. The helmet was manufactured using manganese steel stamping, which could withstand pistol bullets or bomb fragments at long distances. The mesh on top primarily served camouflage purposes. The lining of the helmet consisted of felt and leather materials. I have worn this type of helmet myself, and once the chin strap is fastened, the helmet fits snugly on the head. Overall, it is quite comfortable. Now that we've covered the attire, let's take a look at the personal items. Let's start with the weapons. The first one is the M1 Garand, a semi-automatic rifle. This rifle is widely recognized as the best semi-automatic rifle of World War II, alongside the German G43 and the Soviet SVT-40. The M1 Garand has a length of 1.1 meters and weighs 4.37 kilograms when empty. Its effective range reaches up to 732 meters, and on the battlefield of World War II, any shooting beyond 300 meters was considered long-range sniping. From this perspective, with an muzzle velocity of up to 865 meters per second, it can definitely be considered a sniper rifle. And then it's time for the .30-06 Springfield Rifle Ammunition. This type of ammunition is now commonly referred to as 7.62 mm bullets. They are 84.8 mm long and come in three variations, flat nose, pointed nose, and lead core. The shell is made of brass, and the propellant charge is 3.24 grams. The bullet's muzzle velocity can reach 837 meters per second. It was the commonly used ammunition by the U.S. military at that time and was compatible with all machine guns and rifles. Of course, the pistol requires separate ammunition. The Colt M1911 pistol, to be precise, was not the standard issue for the U.S. military during World War II. 
It served as a supplementary weapon for the military during World War I, World War II, the Cold War, and even for some units of the U.S. military today. The Colt M1911 was designed by firearms master John Browning, and after his patent was purchased by Colt, it went into mass production. The Colt M1911 has a caliber of 11.43 mm or 0.45 inches. It has a chamber capacity of one round, and with a seven round magazine, it has a total capacity of eight rounds. Although there have been extended magazines developed later on, the standard seven round magazine has remained the standard configuration for the US military. While the ammunition capacity may seem limited by today's standards, the .45 caliber bullet helps compensate for any firepower deficiencies. Although it wasn't the world's first semi-automatic pistol, it is undoubtedly the most iconic. Its features such as the lock breech firing mechanism, single action trigger, blued finish, and the intricate grid pattern on the wooden grip panels make it visually appealing. There are very few men who could resist the allure of such a firearm that combines violence and aesthetics in one. After discussing the firearms, let's take a look at the other offensive equipment carried by the U.S. military during World War II. In addition to firearms, hand grenades are essential individual weapons on the battlefield. The Mark 3A2 was the standard issue offensive grenade for the U.S. military at that time. The Mark 3A2 grenade had a fuse time of 4 seconds and a kill radius of approximately 8 to 10 meters. It primarily relied on the shrapnel effect of TNT explosive and steel balls for its lethality rather than relying on fragmentation. It proved to be highly effective against targets in cover or trenches. As you may know, when soldiers are able to throw grenades into enemy positions or trenches, it usually indicates that the soldiers are on the offensive. That's why the Mark 3A2 is also referred to as the defensive grenade. Just as there is an offensive type, there is also a defensive type. As the name suggests, the defensive grenade is designed for use in defensive situations. The Mark II grenade had a kill radius of approximately 5 to 10 meters and a fuse time of 4 seconds. It was the second type of grenade used by the U.S. military during World War II. The Mark II grenade primarily relied on fragmentation for its lethality. This type of killing mechanism was more suitable for defensive purposes compared to the first type of grenade. Therefore, the Mark II is referred to as the defensive grenade. In addition to being thrown, the Mark II can also be mounted on the M7 or M9 as a rifle grenade. The M9 series is a grenade launcher attached to the muzzle of a rifle. By firing a blank round, the rifle generates the propulsion needed to launch the grenade up to 300 meters away. This distance is far beyond what can be achieved by throwing grenades manually. While it is useful, typically only two soldiers in a squad are allowed to carry this kind of kit. In addition to firearms, the U.S. military also had a cold weapon as standard equipment during that time. It was the M1 bayonet specifically designed for the M1 rifle. The blade of this knife was forged from manganese steel and had fullers on both sides. The rear and front of the bayonet had slots and a barrel sleeve, respectively, for attachment to the rifle. When not in use, the bayonet would be stored in an aluminum scabbard and attached to the soldier's belt using straps. The aforementioned items were all offensive equipment used by frontline American soldiers during World War II. Now let's move on to the logistics side and see what other equipment they had. First, there's the M2 gas mask, which has a distinct defensive purpose. The mask has a relatively simple structure, consisting of a double-layered leather body with a breathing apparatus directly attached on. It allows for quick donning and has a compact size that doesn't take up much space when carried. Next is the supply side, represented by the M1943 ammunition belt. This belt contains 10 magazine pouches, with each pouch accommodating an 8-round clip, resulting in a total capacity of 80 rounds. Of course, during combat, soldiers would also carry additional magazines in their backpacks. Next is the M1943 backpack. Although it wasn't the only backpack used by the U.S. military at that time, it was certainly the most common one. It was made of the same canvas material as the individual belt, which is durable and abrasion resistant. 
The backpack had two main straps and additional buckles to securely fasten it to the soldier's waist, reducing the burden and preventing it from falling off. Its most significant feature was that it appeared small but could hold a lot of items. It also had multiple attachment points for adding small accessories or even attaching additional small backpacks, depending on the soldier's physical fitness. Finally, let's talk about the last and most important individual equipment for the American soldiers of World War II, the identification tag. Technically, it is neither a weapon nor equipment, but it is something that no U.S. soldier could do without. The identification tag, commonly known as the dog tag, would contain the wearer's name, rank, and basic information. If a soldier returned safely, the tag would have no use. However, in the unfortunate event of a soldier's death, their comrades or the logistics team could use the tag to obtain accurate identification information. Some people say that with good food and equipment, it's natural for the U.S. military to win wars. While I don't completely agree with this statement, finely detailed individual equipment undoubtedly enhances combat effectiveness. However, behind this level of provision lies the support of a powerful nation and the utmost respect for the lives of each soldier. These are the impressions I have gained from the above nearly 30 equipment items. What do you think about it?